Let me guess, you're looking for the best art hacks. Well, I got them. Perhaps you need the best art tips and tricks. <laughs> got those too. In this video right here, I'm gonna share with you the best art hacks that are simple, easy to do, and the best part is, you can do them all with supplies that you're gonna find in your house. Well, I mean, you should find them in your house. I'm not your parent, you can keep them wherever, but whatever, let's get into the video. What is up all you awesome artists? Wow, here helping you become bigger and better with your creative adventures. Real quick, if this is your first time here, we do a lot of how-tos, tips, tricks, tutorials with some inspiration and sprinkled in with a little bit of light and fun humor. If that sounds like something fun for you, do us a favor, join the community. We'd love to have you by smashing that subscribe button down below. And if you wanna go above and beyond because you're a returning subscriber, you can help us out becoming a channel member where you can help support this channel right here for as low as one dollar a month. And I thank you to all the members that have done so already. Whew. I'm excited to do this video because this is actually a really cool list. It's also very hot here in California. So forgive me if I start to glisten through this video. We'll just say it adds to the special effects. Here we go. Amazon deliveries. I mean, let's be honest. You do it a lot and I do it a lot. I'm constantly getting stuff from Amazon. I mean, I, I love it. But when you get your delivery, you generally take your box, take out your item and throw that box away. But don't do that. That box has a very good use for you. Cut off a couple of slivers that are clean and then wipe it clean from dust or debris or whatever's on it. Then add a few layers of gesso to that cardboard and bang, you have yourself an awesome practice surface. Work on making natural gradients and blending colors, make some clouds, practice your paint breaks on mountains and forming some trees. This is the perfect practice material and it technically didn't cost you any more than the delivery coming to your house. Then when you're all done, just take that cardboard piece and throw it away. Art spray bottle. Hopefully you're like me and have beautiful, beautiful hair. And because of that hair, I have myself a spray bottle to take care of it and comb it every now and then. Oh, yes. Here I go again on my own. Like a drifter, I was born to walk alone. I'm so wet now. That was probably a horrible idea. Just wipe off my face here real quick. We'll get back to the video, <laughs> hopefully. Spray bottles are a great art hack. Have you ever bought a canvas that is probably cheap or you've been laying it around your house for a while and it's gotten really flimsy and not tight? Well, we can fix that in just a few moments. Take your spray bottle, turn your canvas over, and just hit the back with some water here. I recommend distilled water. If you don't have that, then using tap water that goes through a filter is good. And just give it a good coating. Take this canvas, let the backside hit the sun outside, let it dry up. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take all of that cotton and start to tighten it up in the sun, making that canvas nice and taut and perfect for painting. Ziploc bag cleaning. Ziploc bags are a great art hack that not many people talk about. I love to use them for keeping things clean. Now, if you use mediums or thinners or anything to clean up your brushes, you generally have to use a bucket to put that thinner in. Don't do that. Put a Ziploc bag in first, then put in your thinner because when you dirty up your thinner or mediums or whatever you're using, you can just take the Ziploc bag out and everything else will be clean in this bucket. And then you'll have an easier time separating out the mediums to reuse them for later or the thinners for later. Get yourself some cheap Ziploc bags. Oh, and real quick, you don't need to just get the gallon size for things like a bucket. You can get yourself the core or the pint for things like small glass jars or baby food jars for anything that you use to clean off your brushes or put your thinners in. It's just a game changer when it comes to cleaning up and it makes things a lot easier. Cheap way to travel with your oil colors. If you're an artist out there that wants to do outdoor painting or perhaps you have to take your art supplies on the go, you wanna make sure you do it correctly. And a cheap little awesome hack is if you've bought any pillowcases, duvet covers, or sheets for your bed, they generally come in a plastic soft bag just like this, which is great for transporting your oil colors. Simply just take your tube, drop them in, zip it up. The reason I love this is for two reasons. It's a thicker plastic so the tubes won't poke through, especially for those metal or aluminum tubes that you'll be buying. And number two is things get messy when you're on the go. 
something might explode or leak or get damaged. And when it's self-contained in this bag, it's not gonna get over your entire kit and ruin everything. This is awesome. This tip right here is more of a preemptive tip. If you plan on getting new sheets or pillowcases, just hold on to the packaging material. But if you don't have access to that at the moment, it's okay, I got an alternative for you. I'm gonna take you back to the days of when I was an awesome underwear model. Oh yeah, it's true. If you spend a little bit of money on some underwear this day and age, generally it comes in an awesome package. Not this package, ladies, this package. It's like looking in a mirror, just, just now realize that. This package is actually strong, sturdy, and it comes with a zip lock top on it that you can drop your oil paints in, and it's great for traveling around with because it'll keep everything safe. Now, if you're a lady out there, a little more tough. When you buy your underwear and panties, they're generally sold in singles or individual, so you usually don't get access to packaging material, but if you do, hey, think about using it for your art transport. Canvas cleanup. If you've ever started to paint something and it's just not going your way, you can save the canvas by scraping all the paint off. Using your palette knife isn't the easiest or sometimes the best as you can go through. And a good kitchen hack for this is using a silicone spatula. Now do not use your spatula that you use for everyday cooking. Keep that one aside. I have extra ones that I've acquired from when I buy pots or dishes or anything like that. And these little silicone um, spatulas work fantastic. Just take the handle off just like this. Boom, and now I have all this surface area right here to take up to my canvas and scrape all the excess wet color off. Now that canvas is gonna be toned now where we can put a nice little wash with either more liquid medium down or even a little bit of odorless thinner to make a nice wash, but it'll be good to use from here on out. If you need to buy yourself a set of spatulas, they're extremely cheap at dollar stores, so think about going there first. Paper towel dispenser. A great hack that you can find in your garage is using bungee cords. Bungee cords are fantastic for taking your paper towel and threading it through the center here and then putting it on the side of your easel legs to where your paper towel sits in the middle. This is great for when you have to wipe off excess paint or you need an extra piece of towel to clean up your hands or pull out contaminated brushes. This is probably one of my favorite tips and it's so easy to do. Whatever easel you have out there that's got at least two front legs, just take a little bit of paper towel, thread it with some bungee, put it around your legs, and you get yourself an easy cleanup station. If you want a bonus tip for the bungee cord, I recommend using these blue shop towels because they work so great with oil paints, but you know, normal towels will work just as good. Just be careful if you go too cheap because sometimes when you pull your paints or your colors, or your brushes through those paper towels, they kind of wad up and break, which could get onto your canvas when you're painting. So just be careful on how cheap you go. Protecting your surfaces using wax paper or saran or plastic wrap are great for protecting your possessions. If you have anything near your easel or your easel in general, perhaps like your painting shelf, wrap it in wax paper and hold it down with some clamps or binder clips or sandwich clips, or you can use saran wrap and wrap around things so that way they're protected. I know people say, oh, I'm very cautious when I paint, but trust me, when you use things like liquid mediums or thinner paints, that stuff can go everywhere and you don't wanna ruin your stuff. Be safe, go buy yourself some cheap wax paper or saran or plastic wrap. Trust me, it'll save you a lot of things in your household. I feel like I need to do a little bit of a PSA here. Hi, my name's Wild. If you have rug rats or little ones running around, make sure you keep your plastic wrap and saran wrap away from them. If you're an adult, make sure you wrap it up and practice safe painting. This is Wild letting you know you can never be too safe when it comes to plastic or saran wrap. Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Too wet and too oily paint. If you're a brand new artist out there, generally you're gonna start off with buying the cheapest art kit you can. And generally when you do that, the pigment colors in the tubes aren't that great because it contains too much oil, but we can fix this. Remember how we talked about that Amazon box? You can actually cut off a sliver of cardboard and lay your oil paint on a clean piece of cardboard. You don't got any cardboard? Hey, remember those old brown sandwich bags that we used to take to school? You can use that too. 
just take your oil paint and your palette knife and pull it in a nice thin strip across and let it sit there for a little bit. You will see the excess oil start to steep into the cardboard or the brown paper. Once it's got to a nice firm shape that you like it, just scrape it off and put it on your mixing palette. And now you can use it to make beautiful thicker highlights or laying of land or whatever you wanna use it for. This is an awesome hack. Storing and displaying. As you start to paint, you're gonna have wet pieces that you need to dry and also pieces that you wanna put on display. Generally, people like to hang this on their wall, which requires hammer and nails, but that sucks. A better solution is just using 3M Velcro. This works so good. All you gotta do is just take the sticky side, put it on the back of your canvas, take the other side and put it on your wall. Generally two or four strips will do depending on the size and weight of your canvas. And I like this for a couple of reasons. One, it's not gonna damage your wall. You don't have to patch small holes down the road and you're probably gonna put a lot of holes in your wall making it look like Swiss cheese because you're gonna do a lot of art. These Velcro strips save you on that. Number two is it's actually really easy to line up Velcro strips when you have to hang them with other canvas pieces on the wall. It makes things nice and symmetrical for the eye. I recommend get the bulk set on Amazon or if you have a bulk store near you like a Costco or a Sam's Club, you can generally find these for pretty darn cheap. And these are lifesavers. In fact, I use these for so many different art hacks that I'll share with you at some point. In fact, maybe we'll just do a whole video on 3M supplies for art hacks one day. Super easy cleanup. If you're the type of painter like me that loves to push harder on the canvas, has some vigorous strokes, generally that leads to splash back on your clothes, your arms, and generally all over your hands. And most people reach for a nice soft soap like Dawn, which is a biodegradable soap. Sometimes this isn't enough. It'll do the job for about 90% of things that get over your body, but we can kick it up a notch by adding some salt or sugar to the mixture of soap. Just put a nice dollop of soap in your hands and a little bit of salt or sugar in that dollop and mix it well and start rubbing it on wherever the paint is adhering to your body. If it's on your hands, just rub it and you will see the salt and the sugar start to eat away at the bigger chunks while the soap will get the rest off and make your skin nice and smooth and biodegrade and eat away all the rest of the excess oil and paint. The combination of sugar and salt with Dawn dish soap works great and it's an awesome hack. Ugh, it's so hot. These are just some of the hacks that I wanted to share with you all. The cool thing are these are all things that are generally in your home or that you can easily acquire. If you like this type of video, do me a favor. Let me know down below if you want like a part two or other tips and tricks or hacks for different types of mediums or different types of styles. I got a bunch of them. While you're down there leaving that comment, you can also subscribe to this channel. And like we said before, maybe become even a channel member where you can help support this channel and make the community even better and awesomer and cooler -er? Yeah, we'll go with all those. My brain's tapped out for this video. If you need any more help with anything related to art, got a couple of videos that I'm gonna put right over here that'll help you become bigger and better with your creative adventures. My name's Wild, wishing you the best of luck, and as always, let's hope for cooler weather, and of course, peace.